Uh, so we have a different approach to accommodation. And today what I'd like to do is go through uh, what we've been doing the past few years in terms of accommodative technology. We have three lenses. Uh, the first one some of you may have seen out at uh, London at ESCRS. That's our ACTA lens. That's a single optic lens, uh, which was presented at e ESCRS with, a, uh, with about a one-year follow-up. <clears throat> we also have a dual optic lens, but today uh, what I'd like to announce is our shape change lens, which I think really is where the future is with accommodative lens technology. There's not a lot of time to go through, I think, the entire mechanism behind this lens, uh, but you can see it at actolens.com. There's a nice narrated uh, video that you can see it uh, in, in action. But basically our lens is different because it's made with the optic anterior to the haptics. It's delivered to the surgeon in a restrained configuration, uh, and then it's implanted <clears throat> and allowed to fibrose into the capsular bag. Uh, once it's fibrosed, it's allowed to uh, connect to the capsular bag, and then it's released by uh, laser, YAG laser, after about a month, which allows the ciliary body to relax and allow the optic to move forward into its uh, accommodated configuration. So we've done this now uh, in eight patients. These are eight patients that had the acta lens implanted. The contralateral eyes had either Acrosoft or Crystal Lens, and we have data here at 10 months with UBM showing that we had good movement with the acta lens and not much movement with the uh, control lenses. We also looked at it at one year using a Pentacam HR and we found very similar data. The acta lens was moving forward and our control lenses were not. I think a UBM gives a lot of insight into how the lens works. You know, bas by basic trigonometry, if the lens is moving forward about half a millimeter, it's going to have to be flexing at the haptics. And you can actually see that by UBM that as the lens was moving forward in this patient here about half a millimeter, we were seeing about 15 degrees of flexion of the uh, optic-haptic junction. And that will be important later when we talk about how the uh, Acta Lens SC works. But let's be frank, let's talk about axial shift lenses. Is that really where the future lies? You know, we were seeing about half a diopter, uh, excuse me, half a millimeter of anterior movement with uh, pharmacologic simulation from cyclopentylate to pilocarpine. But that's going to give us about half a diopter of accommodation, of course, depending on certain parameters in the cornea. You can see some variability. But uh, half a diopter is maybe useful for interim technology, but may not be exactly what myself as a, as a cataract surgeon, as a premium cataract surgeon, is excited about. What excites me more is the possibility of greater amounts of accommodation. We have a, a shape change lens, which really can be thought of as being very similar, same platform, same hinge dynamics, same hinge design. That's already been validated now in eight patients. But as shown here on the red, we'll have a soft layer of silicone overlying a firmer layer of silicone, <clears throat> which will allow that soft layer to deform over the firm layer as the haptics are swept back. And as we all know, changes in radius of curvature are going to result in much greater power. So we've done some finite element analysis to look at this, and on the left you can see the current acta lens that we've produced and implanted, and it has shown when the lens is changing and what we've observed about 15 degrees, we're seeing about half a diopter of accommodation roughly in that upper graph. But with a dual layer, as the soft silicone is deformed over the firmer layer underneath it, we're seeing over four diopters of accommodation. So to take the finite element analysis further, we also uh, saw what would happen uh, as, is, as the haptics move back. And you can see the accommodation surges forward as that, anterior core, as that anterior lens surface is deformed over the posterior surface, which is firmer. You can see that we're seeing up to six or seven diopters in this, in this uh, computer model. So clearly the future for us seems to be stronger accommodation will come from shape change lenses. So in summary, where are we? Well, Particularly, we're excited at, Emma, at Emmatrope because we have a system <clears throat> which is offering a capsular independent mechanism. We're not relying on permanent elasticity of the capsule. We're relying on the elasticity of the silicone hinges to provide this movement. We also have uh, IP covering Actilens Duo, which is a dual optic, which may potentiate the effect of that axial movement. But what really excites me and what I'm excited to present here and, and debut here at OIS is the shape change version which should give us over five diopters of accommodation. And perhaps the last piece of the puzzle that would have interested me both as an as a original founder and an original investor and also as a surgeon is I was always interested in longevity and sort of independent analysis. So at, in London, uh, I met Oliver Findle and asked him to come out and do an independent analysis of these eight patients. I said, examine them. He came out with uh, Dr. Hernshaw and they did independent analysis using Lenstar PCI. And we were very excited to see that the lens is still moving at 20 months. 
and there was no movement noted in the, in the control group. So in summary, for me as a surgeon, what's excitable is this is injectable through a small injector system, sutureless, it's in the bag, it's with fully polymerized materials, and I think the future is going to be developing a lens with uh, two to three diopters at least of accommodation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew.